Okay, so with me now is an anonymous graduate from Southern Cross University. So hello, anonymous podiatrist, how are you doing? I'm good, Tyson. Thanks for having me on. It's, I, I like having anonymous people every now and then. It creates a little bit of mystery. People are listening <laughs> and going, oh, I think I recognise that voice. But it doesn't matter who you think it is, I may have distorted it. I may yes. have that skill set. Yeah, so it might sound <laughs> like, it may even sound like it could be female, but it could be male. You don't That's know. That's right. Or somewhere in between. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to dive straight into the questions. Let's go. And, and they're, they're pretty simple, but when it came to looking for job opportunities, where, whereabouts did you look to actually find what jobs were available? I think on every placement, there was pretty much a job offer Okay. Um, in, in podiatry. So I perused those. I had plenty of time to look to see how how the business worked, how they were as people, and make a decision if I wanted to go there. Yeah, I looked at a little bit on Seek, and as did other graduates who applied for those positions, interviewed for them, and told me why they didn't take them. So I didn't apply. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's interesting. So when as students, when everybody was looking at jobs and applied for certain ones, if they had a negative experience, they told everybody else it wasn't a good job. That's right. Not so much that it wasn't a good job, but what were the factors that made you say no? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Is that, and I, I've always said that about the podiatry profession as a whole. If you think, oh, no, oh, yeah, behind closed doors, I can be a bit of a mongrel boss, but nobody knows. No, everybody knows who the bad bosses are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we still speak to each other, even though we finish uni. Yeah. And meet people out in the workforce and hear things. So, yeah, it's definitely a network. And, and it's a small network. Okay, I'll move on to the second question. Mm. Was there anything in any of the ads that as soon as you read them, it immediately just put you off of that position? I can't say in the ads because they're usually pretty well critiqued. Yeah. It's more so if you speak to them and then they say something different from what's on offer in the ad. Okay. So generally, like for instance, for one ad that was targeted at new grads, it had mentoring package and quite a, what seemed like a high wage for a, a graduate, but what they had included in that high wage for the ad was your super and the mentoring program. So it was actually quite a low wage. So they were including mentoring as a value that this mentoring yeah. is worth a certain amount of money and they were adding that onto your position. That's right. That was oh, in the advertisement. Yeah. What a rort. Yeah. I've never, I haven't heard that before. It's, mm. it's actually really interesting. I, have, I haven't heard that specific thing, but I have heard other students tell me that when they went for a job, the position said 90 to 110, for example, when they got there, they were only getting offered 75. And I know that includes all these little extra add-ons, but no one's mentioned mentoring before. Yeah, that's right. And that's an immediately a red flag when oh. it's a student's market or a graduate's market. What essentially you're looking for is someone who is who they say they are. You know yeah. what I mean? Even if it's not great pay, but they're honest about what is there, what's and all, you can take it. But when you find out they say things that they don't follow through with them it's not workable yeah that, that's a that's a really good point so how many interviews did you go for how many did you have how many did i have i think i did about three official interviews yeah mm. but you were offered opportunity you were offered jobs each time you did a placement they would yeah. actually say hey do you want to come and work with us next year that's right yeah okay so there, there were a number of offers but Th only three official interviews. Yeah. Okay. Which leads on to the fourth question, and you've probably already answered this. If you rejected certain offers, why? So I'd say that was about the whole honesty side mm -hmm. of things. Okay. Yep. So what made you say yes to the position that you end up taking? I think I was approached after I finished a placement. Yeah. And I think as a new grad, and you're probably a little bit nervous about your skill set and your confidence. It was someone that was really down to earth and approached me and just sent me messages saying, hey, do you want to give it a go? And was really informal. So that's pretty much what made me say yes. Oh, so was, was it the casual sort of approach to the employment yeah. process? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's good. 
So what aspects of podiatry do you actually like the most? I like that it's a people job <laughs> and yeah. you get to talk to lots of different people. I'd say biomechanics first up because uni is quite big on the biomechanics front, but looking at the reality based on placement and where I work now, a lot of it is general work, general treatment work. So I guess I'd have to say I like the variety. I like flipping from one treatment style to another, so from yeah. bios to generals. And I like the learning side of it. So you're always learning something every day. And, yeah, I think the people interaction that I really bounce off that keeps me interested in the job. So it's not actually a specific area of podiatry. It's more the interaction and communication you're having with patients. I think that's a big factor for me, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So was money a factor when you've chose the final job? Was money a big factor? I think initially, yes, it was a big factor. But then, like I say, having those experiences where you go for the big money for the interviews and then it's not what they say it is. So, yeah, it is a pretty significant factor. And as a graduate, particularly as a mature age graduate, it's not a lot of money. <laughs> Well, you're giving um, away secrets about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny, actually, just talking to you. I can hear that you're a mature age student. Mm. You can just, just pick that up really easily, just in the, in the way that we're actually communicating. I can tell that you have experience behind you. Yeah, yeah. Which also means you're not going to put up with BS very often either. Yeah, which I think is yeah. an important note for employers. If you're talking to someone who's a, a mature age student who's got a a few years of experience, don't try and pull the wool over their eyes. Yeah, I agree. So do you have any final comments that if there's an employer listening to this that you would like to say to them to hopefully that they can learn something from? I think one thing as a new graduate would be a mentoring package and with ex like explicit instructions of what that involves yeah. would be really beneficial. Not just, oh, there's three podiatrists with this many collective years that you've got to ask questions to, yeah. which is really ambiguous, but to say, okay, we're meeting once a week with the case studies that you have particularly struggled with this week or found challenging or, yeah, I think that would be a, a really big factor and to explain that in the interview and for a graduate to agree to that. I think a lot of employers don't understand what the mentoring process is all about, and they don't actually have a plan of what it is. When, mm -hmm. when I had my clinic, I, my goal was I could take a new graduate and after three months, I could have them working at the same level as someone that had been out five years. That was my goal. Wow, wow. And, and I had it all mapped out that this is what we're going to be covering over the next three months. Are you ready for the challenge? And everybody that put their hand up and said yes and actually followed that three-month path, at the end of three months, were just on fire. And they oh, would tell amazing. me that I'm seeing more biomechanical patients after three months than, than most of my friends did after two mm. years of working. Yeah. And that's why I reckon I think sometimes employers hold students back when I'm going, no, they're eager to learn. This is mm. the best time. While they're still eager to learn, they've just come out of uni, you can teach them so much in yeah. a short period of time and that and the right person will just eat it up yeah exactly so to me it's i think what you said that the mentoring is really important but i think the employers need to know how to mentor and actually have it mapped out this is what we're going to teach you when yeah. and the students have been taking in information for the last four years keep the information flowing and they'll do well any final words before we wrap up that's it thanks tyson okay anonymous new graduate. Thank you for coming on here, sharing your experiences. I think this has been very helpful. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Tyson.